Welcome to Speed Scene Live TV, the only show dedicated to the sportsman racer. Brought to you by Curry Rear Ends, Hedman Hustler Headers, m &H Tires, Aeromotive Fuel Systems, and TheFoat.com. With your hosts, Diana Might, Bruce Barker, Scott Lucky Hudson, Alex Rogio, Bob Beck, Bryant Layton, with Donnie Couch and Dar Hawthorne. All right, good evening, everybody. Welcome once again to Speed Scene Live. It's another Tuesday night under the lights here high atop the Speed Scene Studios in beautiful downtown NoHo, California. That's and it. with me tonight is the always lovely Bruce Barker. One can get into trouble so quickly saying things like NoHo and SoHo. You just never know what's going to happen oh, after that. Oh, yeah, but we're having fun here in NoHo. In uh, short, for those of you not familiar with the Southern California vernacular, is North Hollywood. Would, but they call it NoHo because they're too lazy to say the whole thing. That's right. As you can see, we're firing up the uh, the Nitro vehicle right outside the NoHo studios. Hey, that's Mindy Fry. Mindy Fry, yeah. Nice, yeah. This, by the way, thank you, uh, Les Mayhew, Nitro America, courtesy of uh, Key. Yeah, and with us tonight, uh, we're going to bring him on in just a second to talk about some special events, is Dar Hawthorne. Dar, are you there? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Hello, Dar. Can you, hear, can you hear me okay? We can hear you just fine. All right, good. Yeah, well, I just wanted to uh, to call in to uh, let everybody know in the Southern California, Central California area of uh, this weekend's uh, huge event going on at Auto Club uh, Famoso Raceway, the Nostalgia Fall Championship for uh, Heritage Series Group 2 cars, the uh, Fun Ford uh, Weekend, and uh, there's going to be a whole bunch of West Coast Outlaw Pro Mods there. And Saturday Night Nitro, which will decide uh, the the winner of the uh, Boise Bakersfield Blitz. So it will be the final race, and it's down to four cars. Any one of the four could win with by setting low ET of the event. And uh, for Saturday Night Nitro, could easily pick up about uh, four to five thousand dollars worth of prizes from Prolong Motor Oil and uh, replay cameras and uh, you know uh, Littlefield Supercharger equipment. Uh, you know, a really great prize package for uh, having participated in the four events, two at Auto Club Famoso Raceway and two at, uh, uh, at Boise at Firebird Raceway. Now, who are the four drivers you were talking about, though? That's Dan Horan, the Patriot Mustang. Right. Uh, Robert, Robert Overholzer in the California Hustler Firebird. And then uh, right behind them by uh, one point each are Richard Townsend with the Nitroholic uh, Camaro and Roger Garten, veteran Roger Garten with his uh, war horse uh, 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 Mustang. Wow, all four so, are tough drivers. I mean, Haran coming from a long line. I mean, his dad, Curly, was a top fuel driver back in the early days. Well, and he's got a tuner by the name of Ronnie Swearingen, who's sort of kicking everybody's butt this year. Uh -huh. Haran is leading in the Heritage Series points and, uh, and is also, you know, tied for the Boise Bakersfield Blitz. So, you know, the, uh, last year... Haran won the Blitz by, I think, six points over Robert Overholzer. But this going into this event, they're tied uh, dead even. Wow. So it's, uh, it's, there's a lot of stuff happening up at Famoso this weekend. And the biggest part is, for Saturday Night Nitro, if you guys show up with your car, truck, van, or whatever, uh, fill to the gills, it's going to cost you 25 bucks to get in the gate. Ooh, one yeah. shot, 25 bucks for everybody, huh? After yeah. After 4 p.m. <laughs> on Saturday night, it's 25 bucks. Wow. Even the guys we're seeing on screen right now. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> How about that? So uh, I'll, I'll, we'll be up there, uh, and and we'll be uh, we'll have some results uh, uh, next week on Speed Scene Live. But I just wanted to let everybody know there's going to be a hell of a show this weekend. And uh, you know the the cool thing is you get together a bunch of your buddies, fit them in the station wagon or the van. And uh, come up, and you'll even have more beer money. I'll tell you, yeah, that'd be good. That'd be good. I can see that happening. <laughs> yeah. So it's kind of a, you know, there, there was like more than two thumbs up, but we ran out of thumbs. <laughs> <laughs> thumbs. Yeah. Anyway, thanks for the time. It, uh, it's going to be a hell of a show this weekend. Auto Club Famoso Raceway, uh, just north of Bakersfield. And uh, come on up and there. Come on down from Central California and have a great time. Come on over. It's freeway close from everybody. Yeah, there you That's go. It. Well, 
Hey, Dar, and man. Weekend, uh, I, I spoke with Mike Bowser yesterday, and he said that they have got pre-entered. Uh, they actually they don't do pre-entry for this event, but he's expecting probably 25 Nitro cars for the event. Ooh, yeah, that's going to be some great racing. Yep. Wow. All right, famous Auto Club Famoso Raceway this weekend. Nitro in in the nighttime. It's going to be great. I tell you what, you love watching those flames come out of the headers. We're going to have a lot of fun. So uh, come on up. We'll see you later. Get on with the show, and uh, thanks for the time, guys. All right, thanks, Dart. Man, I was, you know, I'm wondering as is uh, let's yeah. see, it's all atmospheric conditions. Is nitro yeah. racing louder at night or in the daytime? I'll bet you it's louder at night just because of it depends on how many guys came in the van and how much beer they had before that. Uh, yeah, that's probably yeah, you know, that's yeah, probably it's, it's a simple equation, but you know, it's, it's beer over air versus sound. Uh, yeah, <laughs> that's, that's that's some Einsteinian yeah. like gravity thing. It's kind of it. Yeah, yeah. Did an apple fall on your head to get that equation working? Well, yeah, either that or a pear. I don't know, (laughs) but it was a good one. Hey, we have got a a night chock full of great information, and we're even going to play games tonight. With us online right now, just patiently waiting, is is Brandon Warren, and he has a site that I've been on a number of times, and you're going to love it. It's called AmericanTorque.com. Brandon, how are you doing tonight? Doing great. Uh, thanks for having me. Not a problem. Now, I've been on your site a number of times, even before we had spoken, uh, because a lot of people had sent me links saying, hey, you got to try this. So what we've done is we've set up, and with your help, a game for everyone to pick on tonight. All right. And we're going to do it. And the first vehicle, I think uh, you go on the site, you see a lot of great pictures, pictures of your dad's old car um, and all sorts of stuff. Yeah, Some great yeah. shots. Now, where do you get these photographs? Um, a lot of them are uh, member submitted. Um, actually, most are member submitted, mm-hmm. and some are taken by me. Oh, okay. Well, we've been on there, and uh, we've been playing with this site, uh, the game you set up <laughs> for us. And it's a trivia site for those of you who think you're car guys. And if you you really want to test your knowledge, and it's down to infinite detail sometimes to figure out what something is. And, and in the game tonight, it's like, right now, this is to me, this is relatively easy. But... For some people, they'll pick out what year GTO this is. Now, the choices you've given us is 1964, 1966, 1968, and 1970. Bruce, what, what did you think it was? Okay, I, I uh, kind of got a head start here because I wanted to make sure that I was going to be able to click the button and we can have everybody actually view it as we went along. So as you can see on the screen, it, <laughs> if you yes. squint your eyes. Squint your eyes. Bruce I, is pointing to it. I clicked 1966. Okay, I'll hit uh, next. Okay, okay, I'll hit next. Now, now, the reason, by the way, I, there was a reason for this. I am not an, a GTO aficionado, but yes. I know that later in the decade, uh-huh. side lights, side markers were mandatory. So, right. so that eliminated some of the later years. Exactly. Now, one of the things to look at on this, it is a 1966 GTO. And according, oh, okay. Now, now, what Brandon also does, he puts down three out of six people or other players got the question right. So 50% of the audience didn't know what your GTO this is. And unless you're a GTO aficionado or like you and I, we know, okay, there were certain things that were federally, federally required yeah. and things changed, like 68 side markers and mm-hmm. no wind wings. Yes, Because yes, they had yes. flow-through ventilation in the GM cars. Yeah. And we picked this out. And, Brendan, you've got to do a lot of research on this before you put down your questions, don't you? Yeah, that's right. And it's kind of easy because you've got the internet, you've got car shows um, where you can take a lot of pictures and and uh, everyone writes down what kind of car they have. And so I just collect all that, catalog it, and uh, just try to make something cool. I'll tell you what, and it's fun because you also get bragging rights over your friends. You have, bun- you have a bunch of your friends take the test. And then you guys communicate with each other. And I did this on Facebook the first time I found it. I had one of my friends, one of the guys I used to work for or work with in Texas, came up and said, okay, you got to do this. Tell me what your score is. I got 86. And I came back and I got 98. Dude. <laughs> yeah. So I sent it back to right. Nanner, Nanner, Nanner. And then we found out there were more tests. And we started doing more and more of the tests. Now, the second one on this test that you sent well, let us. Me, uh, yeah. I'll just say, just, uh, just for the heck of it, yeah. um, that first car, the GTO, is my car. That's the oh, really? first time my car has ever appeared in a game. Is, oh. oh, hey. That, that is a beauty, too. Now, I'm looking at the picture on screen right now because I've already advanced the next question yeah. of mine. Because I've got to look my, my my computer here. But. Uh, now, does that have old Hurst's, Hurst wheels? Oh, those kind of look like Hurst. Those are, um, 
a tri rib made by um, Raider Wheels. Raider. Oh, okay, man. that was my next choice. Was Raider, but uh, th- I'm looking at uh, Bruce's screen right now because I've already passed mine. So that that's wow. uh, that's interesting. That is now, one smooth GTO. And of course, now we've discovered, uh, not to interrupt you, Bob, that yep. when you click next, you get not only the answer which you can see on the upper left of your screen, but then you get the next question. In our case, what year is this El Camino? Yeah. Now th- you got to remember. Now we're car guys, so we understand some of this stuff. But this car or this truck. <laughs> Was only produced for two years. Yeah, and see, it would be much easier if it was from the back because I start to lose. I okay. Yeah, Brandon, yeah. are you ready for me to get it wrong? Go for yes. it. <laughs> okay, here we go. Uh, seeing as 1959 is not a choice, and I know the body was similar for the first couple of years, I'm going to pick 1960. And here I go. I'm clicking next. Ooh, correct! Yes, you got All another right. one right. And uh, yeah, Brandon, you say fifty percent of the people, four out of seven of the other players so far, have gotten this right. And uh, to me, that was a simple one because the fifty-nine had cat's eyes. That's right. In and the, the hood, sixty would have—I uh, think there would be circular lights, but the body was similar with those flat tail it, fins, right? Yeah, it was the, the the year of the fins. Yeah, yeah. So Brandon, now just to make sure everybody can go on to American Torque, and for uh, for instance, we're we're going to show a screenshot here of one where you can sort of choose your game. I think. Yeah. Oh, this yeah. is in fact a featured members page where you can uh, choose your rides and whatnot. Mm-hmm. But people can actually go and play several games on your site, right? Not just the one we're watching now oh, no. that you created right. especially you for speed. Go on the uh, um, near the top. There's a menu bar that's blue, and there's one called there's a section called games. Just click on that, and you'll see. Look Everything listed. Oh, and there's yeah. your choices of games. And I did, uh, you and I were talking uh, earlier, Brandon, and I did the mm-hmm. race car one. And the dragsters are not that easy to determine. No. Did you choose the vintage dragster game here? I did that yeah. one with the front motor dragsters. Okay. And uh, I, I got them all, but I guessed at two, and I, I guessed correctly. This one to me was simple. Oh. <laughs> I mean, looking at this vehicle, the engine alone, you know what it is. Right off the bat, or at least I would. You know what it is, right off the bat. I, I like the engine, but I, you know, I'd be a little lost. Um, well, yeah. I would go for the green monster. Yeah. Okay. Our fonts. Okay. Well, in fact, I'm going to click that because see now, Brandon, you've created a monster. Speaking of monsters here, because <laughs> this advances you to the next page of the game, and you can just keep playing. And as we can see, speed scene live viewers across the world, that's exactly what I'm doing. Yeah. <laughs> now this car, I know. Personally, because the driver was a friend of, or is a friend of mine, and we've even had him on Speed Scene. Have we? Yes, we have. Okay, it's a two-engine dragster, yes. so I, I want to go for, like, TV Tommy Ivo or, or somebody outrageous like that, or oh, somebody more recent. I'm drawing a blank there, Bob. You're drawing a blank? Well, look down lower, go to the last one, click Freight Train. Okay, Freight Train, and here we go. And uh, John Peters freight train and double A gas dragster last raced in 1972. Well, and that was with Bob Moravis behind the wheel or Floyd uh, Lippincott Jr. Peters right. never drove the car, mm. although he got credit for it when Bob was trying to hide who he was so his dad wouldn't find out. Yeah. So John Peters won the Winter Nationals one year and never got behind the wheel. <laughs> wow. Hey, so uh, I know, Brandon, too, that you mentioned, you know, there's a lot of these. In fact, to go back to the game that you created, especially for tonight's broadcast for Speed Mm -hmm. Scene Live, we're taking a look at a nice Chevrolet motor there. Um, Mm -hmm. A lot of the material that you have, uh, there's stories, obviously, behind all these cars because they're either cars you owned, people that you know. Um, For instance, if you were to just take a story at random, pick one of the cars just at random, uh, uh, is there a good story behind one that, that comes to mind? Well, um, in the game, there's a few stories in the cars coming up. Um, oh, in this game that we're playing yeah. now. So we'll get, yeah. we'll get through this engine. Bruce, all right. Okay. You're a Ford guy. What is Which this, engine is it? What is this Chevy Motor with factory tri-power? I Holy will tell you. Holy cow. I'm going to go for a 396. Well, you'd be wrong. Oh, there you have this it. This is a 348. Oh. Now it's W motor. Yep. And the 409 was not available with three deuces, and Brandon's got it on there as well, saying it's not a 409. That's did right. not come with factory tri-power. The 409 had dual quads or single quad, and the 409 is just a little bit different, as you say here, with the dipstick on the passenger side. And 
it's no definitely it's not a 350 or 396 it's what they call the w motor because of the shape of the valve covers and a high oh, level of yes. people got this one right 62 percent five out of eight of the other players got this question right and the only reason i knew it was the trike power uh, I yeah. cannot tell. I, I didn't realize about the dipstick part, but when you're looking at a 348 and a 409, a factory one, that's the only way I can tell the difference because the 409 did not have tri power. Well, see, and I, Brandon, I got stuck on that really cool glass fuel filter that's still sitting on the engine. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay, now we're looking at a, at a LaSalle. Uh oh, I just gave the answer. You just gave the answer away. <laughs> so, okay, moving right along. That was the second one. I was yeah. wondering if there's a story behind this car, though, for instance. Yeah, this car is. Um, my, um, last year, my son in law decided he wanted to uh, buy a pre war car. And so uh, he looked at Craigslist and uh, took me out, and we looked at this car uh, about a half hour drive from where I live. And uh, he ended up buying it. Wow. So he, he and my daughter are the proud owners of a 1940 LaSalle, which is really a trip to uh, ride in. Oh, the I back seat is as big as the front seat as far as legroom goes. It's got a beautiful flat-hand engine to work on, and uh, just just helping them work on doing little minor things to it. It's like taking a trip back in time. I'm looking at the side panel, and the reflection is just awesome. This car is beautiful, and talk about it. That was, a, that was supposedly Cadillac's entry-level luxury car back right. in the day. Yep. Yeah, and obviously, Noah, or if there is body work on the side of that car, it's so well That's done, beautiful. you cannot tell. That's beautiful. Now, the next one, this one I got wrong when I tested it, when I, when oh, I took it. I get this right. Because the Shelby's, uh, Ford kind of, uh, they were a little tough. In 1968, though, I know Ford took over production of the, of the Mustang Shelby, the Shelby Mustangs. Okay, so let's see. What year is this car? It is a, I'm going to call it a 68. That's what I said, and we're, we'd both uh, be wrong. Oh, I, actually, I'm wrong. Oh. I goofed up. Uh oh. I uh, just uh, put this game together uh, yesterday, and um, I'm uh, shocked to admit that uh, uh -oh. you're right. That Mustang is a '68. <laughs> okay. And the reason we know it's a '68 is because it's got a wing window. Yeah. And Mustangs lost the wing window starting in 69. Okay. Then, well, and there's a, right. there's that as well. See, I was going to go for, it's the 67, 68 body style, but I yeah. didn't see any lights in the grill, which I believe was another 67 only feature, Bob. Uh, yeah, and that could have been. I looked at the side markers, and that's where I thought 68. Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, that was so, uh, Hey, you know what, Brandon, not to worry, though, because you put yeah. this game specifically together for Speed Scene Live, so that's not even fair for you to claim five. Yeah, and this is, and, and <laughs> And you've got so many other games with this. The next picture, though, this I love. This is such an amazing shot. Yeah, this of, is eye candy. Beautiful engine. If it didn't move, it got polished or plated, and it, it is just and the gold tone and oh, yeah. it, it's just gorgeous. And I looked at that and I go, okay, that has got to be a caddy. And someone's put a caddy, hot rodded a caddy up, and put it in a, a, a hot rod. It looks like about a Model A. I'm, I'm, well, no, it actually looks nor, newer than that because it's got a, a pointy uh, vent on top of the cowl huh. where the Model A would have had a fuel filler. Oh, uh, uh, yeah. Jeez. So it, yeah, I saw that at the California Hot Rod Reunion last year. Really? Oh, man. Yeah. Okay, that, that's a beauty. And I, I love, and you look at the early carburetors that were used. It, it's kind of weird how they had a, to, a, a cast top <laughs> going to the air cleaner. That is yeah. odd. Oh, and of course, the question is, what kind of engine is this? And it is a caddy. Okay, I'm going to click Cadillac. Speed scene viewers are uh, following along, and that is correct. Not a big block Chevy or no. a small block Ford. No. Uneven exhaust port spacing. Yeah. It's a, not a 409, no W-shaped valve cover. Mm -hmm. Okay. The next one, got. I had, a, I had a study of this one for a long time. Hey, wait a minute. That looks familiar, <laughs> Bob. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully familiar. This one I easily got right. And uh, for those of you who, who don't know, that is my car. And Brendan uh, asked me a, a little while ago, about six months ago, I guess. You asked if uh, you you if I would mind if you put that on one of the games. I said no, go go for it. And it is a 1948 Plymouth. Now, if you look at if you're a Mopar aficionado, there were really no outward signs between a 46 and 48. Which kind of was the case with a lot of post-war cars, right? Yeah. Because they were just cranking them out as fast well, as they cranking could. Cranking them out, and they, they were still there were so many demands on those that uh, people couldn't figure it out. But yeah, it's a forty-eight, and the only reason I, the only thing I can tell that's different is I crashed 
I had a flat tire, and the passenger side fender or the driver's side fender got d- destroyed. I had to get another fender, and I got one off a of 47, and it looked identical until I went to put it on. Oh, interesting. Uh. The, none of the holes match up. How about that? 46 and 47 have the same fender. They had 16-inch wheels. Uh, the 48s had 15s. That seems like a silly waste of effort, though, to, to mismatch the holes when they could have just... Well, they didn't want you to use it because the opening was also different. Oh, yeah. yeah. And until I, set the, <laughs> until I set the fenders on top of each other, I didn't know that. Ah, oh, well, what do you know? So, now, Brandon, will this, uh, the game that we're watching now, that we're playing, I should say, here on Speed Scene Live, will this eventually become uh, part of the games that you have in rotation on AmericanTorque.com? Uh, yes, I'll uh, add it uh, tonight. Cool. Oh man! Well, you know what? And Everybody we're not watching give any more answers. I know. Yeah, we better not give any more answers. We're spoiling it for everybody. <laughs> but you know, how many different games now are there? And do you plan on doing a lot more? We're looking at more on the website right now. Yeah, I think I've got nine on there. Uh, this one here will be the tenth. And uh, yeah, I'm working on more. Um, the next will be uh, another '50s car uh, identification game. Um, 50s has been uh, very popular, and and I'm just trying to uh, keep up with my uh, demand. Yes, and I, I like this is the, when I first took the tests or, or did the games. This is the way the pages actually looked, where you had different choices and you had to go through them all. And yes. I thought it was great. I, the pictures are, are great. The uh, the makes you think. And for those that are not totally immersed, as Bruce and I are. You get to look at those going, oh, wow, and it's an education, not just a game. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the reason I have, um, normally for these car identification games, you see four cars per uh, page. Mm-hmm. And for tonight, I, I made it uh, one car per page because I wanted the picture to be extra large so that they're yeah. easy to see on the broadcast. Yeah, but you're right. On on the multiple games yeah. per page, oh, man, there's That's just great. plenty more gorgeous cars like the... Uh, uh, well, I, I won't give any answers away. <laughs> no. The, the, the first one was, was shoebox Chevys and yep. uh-huh. an earlier version. Yeah. And the one thing I, I've noticed is a lot of times is you'll put cars on there. And they, For example, in this case, we'll give one answer away. The 54 Ford Chevy that's there. I think it's mm-hmm. a 54. Yeah. Um, yeah. Unless you know the difference specifically between a 53 and a 54, you can mistake them. Well, and see, that's where I got lucky, Brandon. You put a 54, and that was the only choice uh, before yeah. the Tri-5 yeah. series. And so you got so, that one right. Yeah, by default. Yeah, by default. See, right. that's what happens when you're a Ford guy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, okay, here's what I think, man. Yeah, it's a definite almost maybe, I think. Oh. Hey, so is there a... Uh, you got the games, of course, on the site, Brandon. Is What's the main function of AmericanTorque.com? What do you actually do there besides play function- games? It is just uh, something fun, something cool. I wanted to make something cool. My uh, inspiration came from my dad, who wrote an article for a car for his car club newsletter about his first car, a 1936 Chevy Coupe. And I thought it'd be cool to make a website where people can post stories and photos of their rides, uh, past and present. It's it's great. I, I love looking at this and the dragster one I took uh, yesterday after you sent me the link to that one, and I thought that was great too because I've seen some of the cars, and uh, they are they are amazing. And I've seen some currently. As a matter of fact, uh, Ron Johnson owns two of the cars that you used on that: the Chisler and uh, I believe uh, Tommy Ivo's uh, Barnstormer. Hmm. Right. So, hey, Brandon, I want you to stick online for a little bit. All we're right. going to take a quick break to do some uh, announcements. And then we're going to go and talk about the Woodward Dream Cruise. And, you know, Brandon, we'll bring you back on, too. That's right. And, by the way, Greg Rassel, thank you so much for hanging on for so oh, long. Yeah. We'll get you on next right here at Speed Scene Live. Hi, I'm Chico from Moon Eyes. I get gas uh, on the Speed Scene. At Aeromotive, we believe that performance means reliability, longevity, and durability. Being the best is no secret. By utilizing aerospace processes, procedures, technology, in-house engineering, true applications knowledge, and three generations of track experience, it's easy to see why we're the best. We take great pride in the fact that everything we sell, we design and make in the USA. See our entire line of fuel pumps and related products by logging on to aeromotiveinc.com. Aeromotive. We know it. We race it. We live it. 60 years. That's a long time for a company to do any one thing. Doing it right while sticking to your founding values. Now that takes hard work and dedication. For 60 years, 
Hetman's all-American workforce has been devoted to manufacturing the very best headers any team of craftsmen can build. That's 60 years of cutting, 60 years of bending, 60 years of welding, more than two million in all, and every set made right here at home. At Hedman Headers, we build all American horsepower, then back it up for life. Hedman Headers, made in the USA. Welcome back to Speed Scene Live TV, the number one online drag racing TV show. Brought to you by Curry Rear Ends, m &H Tires, Hedman Hustler Headers, Aeromotive Fuel Systems, and TheFoat.com. And wouldn't you know it, it's another edition of Speed Scene Live where apparently it is all fun and games. Yes, it is, uh, and we're proving it tonight. That's right. I'm Bruce Barker, he's Hot Rod Bob Beck, and we're, uh, well, essentially pinch hitting for, uh, let's see, Lucky Hudson's out Lucky. racing, Dynamite's out racing, everybody's out racing. I know, and uh, Dar's getting ready for... This weekend at Bakersfield at Famoso Raceway. Yeah, and who knows? You know, Donnie Couch Donnie's is very likely. Yeah, he's probably yeah. schmoozing people at Industry Hill Speedway. Or yeah, uh, he could be doing that and then getting his voice ready for the fuel cars. That could be. Or um, you know, Alex Rogio is going to get her voice ready for. She she's is. probably singing a national anthem at Someplace. some track this weekend. And of course, she's she's uh, ever increasing the speed and the uh, potential. Oh yeah. Of the Magnum S. Yeah, so she'll be in in a couple of weeks, I believe. I think you're right. Yep. Yeah, we'll catch up on her adventures. You know, how fast is that Dodge Magnum going these days? But uh, right now we have on the phone, and Greg, so glad you could hang on. Greg Rassel, you. what is your official tile, uh, title, Greg? Well, my uh, official title with the Woodward Dream Cruise is president of the Woodward Dream Cruise. I've been president since uh, 2009, 2008. Uh, we just finished our 20th Dream Cruise, and nobody thought that, it would sustain itself as a grassroots effort for 20 years, and it's just been truly uh, amazing. The, you know, the support that the communities put behind it, and our presenting sponsor Chevrolet, which is their fourth year, is just awesome in making it sustain a living history of the uh, automobile. All right, right now we're watching a time lapse presentation of uh, as the the uh, Chevy Impala fills up. Uh, the local ABC affiliate put this together. <laughs> Just as a little uh, sort of a pre-cruise promo, I think, Bob. Yeah, and now Dream Cruise is an amazing sh uh, cruise or show. And I I've been to it three times, and it just, it it's amazing. I, I would park at 16 Mile in Woodward, and then we'd walk for hours upon hours. And every city along the route had their own form of car show. It, it, and that's what's really amazing is so much of this is, you know, doing it the way you did, getting out and walking is the best way to see it. Yep. We get like forty to 50,000 uh, uh, classic cars in the, you know, along the route during that day. And like I said, it's, it's so a lot of them are parked and you can see them and that kind of stuff. But it's really amazing to see all these classic cars actually moving and doing it, it it's a living museum versus a static museum like you see at a lot of a lot of shows or a lot of uh, car displays uh, that, that the automotive manufacturers have well the first year i went i remember the official was just one day but there'd be guys kind of cruising the boulevard woodward at night during the week uh the, the next time i came out it was extended to a couple of days, including cruises at night. Yeah, okay. And then the police would block the street off when, okay, it's 10 o'clock, time to leave. But you have all the manufacturers participating and a lot of the aftermarket manufacturers participating as well with booths and information there. Absolutely. And, and once again, it, it varies from community to community who sets up where kind of, kind of thing. But, but you do get tons of aftermarket, and it's such a sense of community. Uh, because you get people come back every year from all over the world. I mean, we've had car clubs from Australia come over to our show. I mean, there's several car clubs that come from the West Coast, uh, you know, to participate. And it, it is truly amazing. They come, and people just reminisce. I think it's the world's largest block party. We advertise <laughs> it as the world's largest free car show because, you know, uh, you can come there and not spend a dime and just cruise, cruise up there now, now Woodward all day and uh, check check out the sites and, and see what you can see. Oh, and, it, and it's amazing. The first year I went, uh, I, I was a an employee of GM, and we we were able to set up a uh, biannual meeting 
so that I was able to get back there for that as well. But the GM booths were in many different locations. Each brand had their own uh, show, so to speak, along the route. Chevrolet had it right at the, the V there on the, one of the streets that comes off uh, from the city into okay, Birmingham. Right, yeah. Birmingham, okay. And uh, Ford had a big, they had a whole park inside there that they had breakfast and they were introducing at that point it was the GT the, mm-hmm. the their their, repl- their replica of the GT40 I guess you could say but they they were introducing that there GM used it for the introduction of the SS Trailblazer and the Solstice and I remember leading the start of the of the the cruising here you, the press was all driving those cars and it, it's just an amazing route how long is Woodward Boulevard well, the cruise, cruise is, takes place on 16. If you take it all the way down to Detroit, it's probably 26 miles wow. long. If you start at the Detroit River and take it all the way up to Pontiac, the Woodward Dream Cruise is uh, right of about 16 miles from uh, nine, nine mile up to Pontiac, which uh, I forget what the mile road is up there. Um, and the reason they settled there is back in the 50s, there was like... 23 to 25 hamburger stands on the 16 mile I think. So that was the American graffiti run for mm-hmm. kids and stuff who grew up in Detroit and, mm-hmm. and and with these cars and that kind of stuff. And that's that that was where everyone who lived in Detroit went to do it before development uh, and sprawl covered it because you used to be able to cruise and not have to hit one stoplight from uh, eight mile all the way to Pontiac. Yeah, and, and the so. rumors I've heard too are uh, some of the guys from uh, the engineering departments of some unnamed manufacturers would actually go out there and uh, test on Woodward. Oh. Is that true? No, so I've heard. So I've heard. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know when I, I, I actually lived in Mount Clemens for a while, and the first cruising I actually did was my neighbor had a, a Plymouth Fury, and he took me out to Woodward one night. And I thought that was just amazing to see the cars and, and kids cruising, uh, kind of like we did here on the West Coast at Van Nuys Boulevard. But uh, Woodward is four lanes in most cases for miles. Absolutely. So, uh, you know, and once again, you know, back in the day before there you know, was a traffic light every quarter, half mile, uh, you used to be able to actually, you know, get out and move. So uh, traffic control devices have sort of slowed that down. But that's the reason why people come back with these classic cars, because it's just, you know, the, it, their heyday was was Woodward. So that's, you know, and that's just the reason everybody sort of comes back, you know, to, to these spots. Now, Woodward goes on every year. It uh, is in August every year. And I, I remember the, the, the last time I went, I made it a three. I went uh, to uh, Hot August Nights in Reno and then to see you guys. Well, then I saw Good Guys, and then I went, or no, I went I went to see uh, Woodward, and then I came back for the West Coast Nationals on, on Good Guys. But Woodward right. is, what, the second weekend in? Uh, third, 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 third week. Saturday in August. It's always the third Saturday in August, it, okay. and it coincides with uh, the NASCAR race at LIS about, okay. I guess, LIS is about 60, 70 miles away on Sunday. So uh, so you can definitely, you know, link a couple of events together, car events together, and they come out and enjoy the cruise and, and work your way back across the country kind of thing. And one of the things I liked about uh, Woodward, too, besides the fact that four lanes and chock full of cars, you've got that big grass center divider, and a lot of the TV stations would set up uh, stages there. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. AD, the ABC affiliate here does a show every year, and this year... Um, we are breaking out into syndication, so there's, uh, I don't know what the title of it, of the uh, special is, but there is a Woodward Dream Cruise special that's going to be in syndication and covering, I think, uh, 80% of the country. So, yeah. so hopefully uh, a lot of your listeners will see it, you know, when they're up late at night or early in the morning or before a football game or something like that, depending on how. Uh, the local markets uh, program it. Well, I'm going to urge them to go because you gotta you got to see this event. I, I've been there, like yeah. I said, I've been to it three different times, and it is just amazing. The The pictures we're showing of some of the cars just doesn't do this show justice, and it's free. There's no entry fees. There's no participation fee. It's all funded by sponsorships and the manufacturers themselves. 
Absolutely. So, I mean, you know, it's definitely someplace, someplace, you know, if you're a car enthusiast, everybody should go to it once. And like I said, Southeast Michigan in August is a great, great, great place to visit. If you're coming from uh, the West Coast or other parts of the country, uh, you know, there's there's a myriad of uh, things to do in, uh, in Southeast Michigan that are car related uh, as well. Yeah, I mean, you've got, the, you've got your dream cruise. And, and I came in early. Like I said, I, I was working, so I, I came in for meetings. But uh, you've got the museums, both Ford and Chrysler, you can see. Plus. Right, and I forward the, the kind of production. Right, they they run a production tour as well. So you can see, uh, I think they run a truck to, truck production tour. So you can see Ford F one fifty being built. Wow! Oh, sweet. Um, that's right that, that's great, and it's an amazing place. Now, you don't have to stay in Detroit proper as far as hotels. I know I stayed uh, a little bit further out because I was commuting between yeah. Flint and, and Detroit during the day. But you also had, uh, let's see, I'm trying to think of what other, oh, the, there was the, the I went, was it Ferndale that has the parade? Ferndale, ha uh, Berkeley has a classic car parade that kicks off on Friday night at 6 p.m. Okay. Uh, there's a, um, and then um, there's uh, usually entertainment up in Pontiac, and there's a, uh, emergency vehicle parade down in Ferndale <laughs> and then you know we always call Ground Zero in Royal Oak you know at Memorial Park we have a car show that has like uh, 500 classic cars this past year which is the most we've ever put in the park uh, you know we just see about everything that's ever been built on wheels. Wow yeah and I'll tell you what coming spent most of my life on the west coast but the cars that you see at Woodward are, are there's a whole different car culture in the in your area, we see a lot of cars that that are restored or hot rodded back there that we don't necessarily see out here. The big cars were really popular, and you see a lot oh, of the big muscle cars. Yes, absolutely. You know, it, it's one of, like I said, it's one of those things where you get actually get to see people driving them and using them, and you know getting them to perform the way they were designed. All right. Well, uh, Greg, I, I appreciate you calling in, and thanks for, for being putting on that v event. I'm going to urge people and to go, and uh, we'll probably talk about it again next July to remind people, and I might put that on my bucket list again and maybe drive my hot rod back there for this. Well, yes. we'd love, love to have you, and if you, if you get over that hot rod, give us a call, and we'll see what we can do. That sounds great. All right. The third Sunday in August. The but third it's, Saturday third in August. Third Saturday, Saturday in August. I'm sorry. August. Saturday yep. in August, but it's going on all during the week. I know they they, they were cruising during the week. I was there with a, a friend from the Hokey Ass Message Board, Lady Hot Rod Lady Cruiser, and we were cruising in her purple Oldsmobile convertible through the whole thing. So uh, no, <laughs> we, we came at night uh, after work, and we would cruise. We'd meet a bunch of people there, and it was a gathering of not only the, the young kids learning about the old cars, but it was the old guys who had the old cars. And uh, we just had a blast. It, it was great. Great oh, people, yeah, it's, it's great awesome. things to see. So, awesome. Greg, thank you very much for calling in. And yeah, thank you. We'll, we'll probably look you up again uh, next July so we can talk about this and invite people to come early. Sounds great. You guys have a great night. You too. Take care now. All right. Bye-bye. Hey, uh, Brandon, I know we left you online, and you're probably going, well, when do I get to talk about my fun and games? But, Whatever you want, <laughs> in between. You're, 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 you're part of the regular participation here. So if you've <laughs> that, got a question... Uh, uh, you... That Woodward Cruise is now on my bucket list. Where else can oh. you find uh, nice nice young men uh, setting up a burnout box for you? <laughs> yeah. uh, isn't that amazing? I, I, I didn't want to necessarily bring that up. I don't know if Greg wanted us to talk about the uh, <laughs> unauthorized burnout or you know water box there, but uh, I'd say you name it, it goes on there. And these pictures are kind of disturbing because when I walk this, and I don't drive it, I, I, I did with, with a friend that one time, but I walk it primarily because there's so many cars parked on the side of the road, and each town along Woodward Boulevard had a different themed car show. You had some with sports cars. There was one whole town that did nothing but Cobras. Wow. So there were wow. Cobra replicas. There were real Cobras. There were GT40s, real GT40s. There were Ferraris. There were, you name it, it was in a different location. Uh, at the, the first time I went, Oldsmobile had taken over a complete park. Holy and they had hot rods. They had all the history of Oldsmobile. General Motors had taken over one of the 50s diners and had all the prototypes and show cars 
Wow. From days gone by, including the original Firebird, which looked like a jet on three wheels. Yeah. That kind of thing. You know, it kind of reminded wow. me of the Mickey Thompson car that he, he raced. But there were, or not the Mickey Thompson, Craig Breedlove. But there yeah, were the so many different places. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And then Chrysler had a whole shop, a strip mall. And that was full of Mopars and all their latest and greatest, plus the history. The Ram Charger guys were there. They had some of the notable drivers were there. Uh, Hmm. This year, I talked to uh, well, I didn't talk. I talked to Anna Marco, who is uh, the editor of Old School Rods, and she went back with Linda Vaughn, and they Uh. were kind of playing dignitary there. Uh, Anna has a Linda Vaughn look-alike outfit she wears when she does backup uh, babe yeah, duties. that's right. And Linda had approved it. So they've become real good friends over the years, and they went back to be dignitaries at Woodward this year for some, I don't know who, may it be Hearst. I, I'm not quite sure who they were uh, representing back there. But it, it's just an amazing show. Uh, it would do wonders for giving you photos of cars that, yeah, like I said, you see different cars there. People... You, you you read about some of the cars, but you may, may not have seen them here on the West Coast. Biscayne 427s that were stripped downs, 67s. There was an S, a 67 SS Fastback full-size Impala. Huh. And mm. I, I've seen them in pictures, but I've never seen one. And back there, I saw a couple of them. But wow. it's it just, you see a, a whole variety of cars. They were more into big cars there, so you see a lot of the big muscle cars than we had here. Yeah, well, see, Brandon, I'm with you. I, I've not even approached being at the Woodward Dream Cruise, but now it's on the bucket list because yeah. there's yeah. too many cars, not enough time. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm thinking, I'm seriously almost thinking about taking my street ride back and taking a, a couple of weeks drive back there and uh, enjoy it. The first year I went, though, was the year of the blackout. Oh, man. And that w- that that created a whole different scenario uh, of things going on and uh, uh, but it, it, it was neat it, it was great and i've been back like i said three times total and just thoroughly enjoyed this event well we're going to switch from car shows and hot rods to funny cars what yes and we've got jim mayer james mayer and Pete and Uriello, and I, I got to say, I, I like these guys, and I've been watching them race for decades. But they've got some news for us. Are you right. guys there? Hello, we're here. You're here. Okay, good. Hey, Bob, I got a yeah. peek. Can you hold up the show? Ah! Yeah, 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 not a problem. Uh, just, <laughs> d- just to hold, don't hold the receiver near the toilet when you're, and it just doesn't go over <laughs> oh, well. Oh boy, oh boy. <laughs> hey, it's nice to talk to you guys. Nice to be on the show. Thanks, Thanks for, for having coming. us. Hey, you gave me some good news the other day. Sifka well, is back. Well, let's not back. talk about that good news. Let's talk no, about no, the good no. news about Sifka. That's good news. <laughs> so that, that's excellent news, and I'll talk to you about that offline. But Sifka is back. Yes. it's uh, the, the torch is going to be handed off uh, from uh, father to son because uh, Jim, you know, ran the show so successfully for all those years. Yeah. And James was growing up through those years, and uh, now he's uh, going to pass the torch to his son. Actually, what I understand is uh, Jim has his old first funny car body still here, and he's going to cut a piece of it off, <laughs> light it on fire, and pass it to James. Uh, uh-huh. as he's passing as a proverbial torch to, uh, you know, to have James take over Sifka. And, okay. you know, as good of a job that Jim did for Sifka, you know, James is going to do just as well, yeah. if not better. Now, I saw a picture. I didn't... Uh Take this picture, download it. But uh, it, it seems to be you, uh, Jimmy. Uh, Jim, you 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 put a um, a scratch in the body of your funny car at one of the races. Oh, that's you, Jim. I I did put a few scratches in that thing, but uh, overall, it was really good to me. So Pete Pete did all the painting on that car over the years, so uh, I was always in good hands. Well, you went from the Corvette to the Camaro, and the, the, one of the pictures I saw was the Corvette was facing in the wrong direction with most of the wheels off the ground. <laughs> yeah, that, that was someone green learning to run a supercharger at Famoso. That's when I got in over my head, backpedaled, and somehow that car uh, picked itself up, turned itself around, and eventually got itself going in the right direction. So I was very fortunate. You, yeah, and you guys put on a heck of a show. Now, people th- you think, well, you're not double-A fuel funny cars, but you guys have, have progressed through the years. It, it started out the California Injected Funny Car Association. Very good. You know your history well. well yes, I remember you from, the, from our days at LACR. And, and then in the late 80s, uh, we started allowing the, the superchargers in the circuit. Yep. 
and that confused some of the uh, the people. They see the superchargers and the word injected, so we just changed it from the injected funny car circuit to the independent funny car circuit. Now, the injected funny cars, they they emerged from another a regular NHRA class, didn't they? Pete could probably talk about that. No, uh, there was an Econo funny car class back in the 70s. Uh, ran at Orange County Raceway. Mm-hmm. Uh, Dennis Taylor was one of the uh, one of the Econo funny cars, Gene Addison and Jim McClure. Mm-hmm. And after Orange County closed, there was really no places to race the car anymore. Then Dennis Taylor, I think, had moved up into the alcohol ranks uh, uh, higher up. And Gene Addison bought the car from, um, from Dennis Taylor and it had a carbureted engine in it. So uh, they didn't have a place to race. So it was L.A. County at the time. Mm-hmm. So basically Bernie would let them in for free, and they would race each other uh, two out of three because uh, Jim McClure had a Ford uh, 69 Ford Mustang with a Ford engine in it, and Gene Addison had the Vega with the Chevy engine in it. So it was a, f- a pure Ford versus Chevy race. So they would have uh, three runs, and then they would um, have a barbecue afterwards, and uh, Bernie would let them in free to do that. And So they decided to go to Phoenix for the 32 funny car race and see if they would be if, if they would be let in free, they could do the same thing. So mm-hmm. uh, Firebird agreed. I guess it's now Wild Horse Pass Raceway, but yeah. uh, they agreed, and uh, uh, Jim McClure and Gene Addison went there. They did their three Ford versus Chevy uh, match race, and uh, at the end of the night, uh, the track gave them a check, oh. and they were just so surprised that uh, they got uh, appearance money to do that um, that uh, it just took off from that point, and it's, that's where really the basics of SIFCA started. And then uh, Virgil Hartman uh, came along, and he he got the group off the ground and rolling with several cars, and then they started doing shows. At, remember Riverside Raceway? Yeah. Ah. Oh, yeah, very well. Yeah. I was we, stationed we at March Air Force at Riverside. Base, right? uh, we would do shows at Palmdale. Yeah. Um, and Carl's Bad Raceway were mm-hmm. the three venues that SIFCA right. did. But it just grew over the years, and then uh, different presidents, and Jim Mayer got a hold of it. And, you know, with Jim's uh, his business sense, he started to contact sponsors, and he started to uh, bring the group really into what it became. Uh, and it really became world-renowned. And it, as far as I'm concerned, the best, the best organized group in drag racing, and it w- worked real well, but... Um, you know, life goes on, and Jim had to do other things, and then uh, the group kind of, kind of just, uh, just stopped. But now, with James wanting to take over, uh, that will um, definitely uh, bring it back to, I'm sure, its its full glory that it had before. All right, now we've got a picture on screen right now. Um, these two guys look somewhat familiar. Huh. That, that, I had hair. I can't believe it. But, uh, <laughs> that is a long time ago. Now, and uh, we used, um, at the time, Jim didn't have a startup bottle, so I had a, a can of WD-40 that we just uh, <laughs> used to start the car, as you can see by looking at it there. And uh, it worked real well. The WD-40 is very flammable. And, uh, yeah. you know, uh, but then after the that, uh, uh, you know, Jim went on to win the championship, I do believe. Yeah. About how many times did you win the championship, Jim? We got five tour credits. Five championships. See, wow. how about that? With WD-40 as a startup bottle. There you go. Nice. Now, you're, you had your Vega. You still have your Vega. Yes, I do. And you're, you're talking to me the other night. You're thinking about getting that thing back up and going again. There's a picture of it right there. What track uh, is it? I'm seeing it. There you go. Yes, that's uh, Gene Addison. Actually, uh, that was at Phoenix. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, that was some years ago. Yeah, the car is uh, there. It just has to. I have to make the cage bigger, and in, in, uh, I've gained uh, a, a few pounds uh, since I drove the car last. So, uh, people ask me, "You're going to go on a diet and lose some weight?" I said, "It's much easier just to make the cage bigger." So, <laughs> that's what I'm going to do. Uh, uh, that would definitely get more. I actually lost weight for a little while, but I've, yeah. I've gained it all back. It's so much Good. easier to gain weight than it is to lose. It. Uh, yes, we know, and uh, I, I understand that one completely. But Sifka has yeah, been so, a fun group to watch. Uh, a lot of guys got started with Sifka. Uh, we just showed a picture a little while ago about Fast Jack Beckman, and he used to drive with you guys. Yes, he did. Yes, okay. he did. And uh, a lot of guys uh, that uh, Clint Thompson also he started with uh, Sifka and he moved up to top alcohol, very successful, and several other racers did also. But uh, if we have the time, I'd like to talk about what's happening of coming up on the 13th of this month. Yes. We're going to be racing at uh, Sacramento, and uh, James can talk about that. He's the one putting all the new stuff together. Good. So 
we kind of have a little bit of history there, and uh, Jim and I, and we'll be up in, uh, you can find us up at Sacramento. We'll be in the rocking chairs. Uh, I actually got a motorized, um, uh, what do they call those, wheelchair that I'll be going around in. Uh, mm-hmm. if you, you know. <laughs> Doing your burnouts and stuff, yeah. But, uh, but, it, but, yeah, we'll be up there. But James is the one running the show now, and, and uh, he's got several sponsors already lined up. James, who are those? Hey, how's it going, guys? Going good. Good, good. Yeah, looks like we got about seven bonus program major sponsors signed up, um, which is a big, big help to you know throw some extra money the the guys' way. Uh, looks like we got like the best package. Try the guys try to get you know as close as they can on reaction time and best they can on the ET there. And then we got you know uh, Enderly fuel injection that signed on with us to do a quick reaction time bonus. Uh, we got Mike's Transmissions who's uh, signed on to do the burnout contest during the second round of qualifying. That's always a fan favorite. Uh, we also got XRP uh, Extreme Racing Products. They got uh, fittings, and uh, they are signed on as the number one qualifier. Throw some extra money back to his way. And then Andy Mears was actually going to race with us, but he uh, wasn't able to. But he was able to throw some sponsorship money. This one's to the margin of victory, and that one is uh, during eliminations to the uh, closest race and to the winner of that closest yeah. race. We'll uh, definitely get some extra money there. And then we have a couple other sponsors who are just kind of throwing some money. Anybody that throws down the lowest UT, uh, regardless of index, will uh, get an extra 100 bucks there. And then we got number one qualifier right off the, the trailer. He'll get an extra 100 bucks. So got some good sponsors coming on and uh, a lot of help. And also got Air Motive that's going to be on there. Oh, sweet. They're going to throw some extra money to our winners. Uh, third place, uh, second place, and first place. All right, back in the heyday, how many cars were in the group? Do you remember? Back in the heyday, you say, but way back? Well, back in the back in the strong day. I mean, we're showing pictures right now of some of the top guys. I think that, there were over 50 members, correct, yeah. Jim? Yeah. yeah we, we had in the uppers of 40-something uh, active members. Uh, I think for a turnout, we pushed, I think it was like 21 to 22 cars at a particular race. That's when we were up to 16 car shows. But... Uh, yeah, the peak was probably about maybe 21 at at, any, at a 16 car show. Started off as an eight car show, then it evolved into a 16 car show. Mm-hmm. So it'd be interesting to see where James is going to take uh, this to uh, Sacramento as an eight car show. He's got already 10 loving cars signed up. Great. A lot of the guys, any guys bringing the cars out of mothballs that have been sitting for a while. Uh, we might have one. Uh, I think Bob Joy. Uh, I think he was one of the first uh, members. Uh, he said he might bring his car down. He's got been around for 30 years. He said he might put it in our booth down there, or something to you know to just kind of have something there that's been there for 30 years to put on our 30th reunion race. Uh, other than that, like, I'm trying to think of anybody else that would be from the. With some of the cars running, they're running with ultra bodies now and so forth. So somehow they're just putting a funny car body back on it. So you're going to see some guys doing. 7 Pro or any one, but now I can easily jump back into Sipka with the right body. Yep. Now, it, it's going to be great. And we've talked about some of the, the great guys that have run, but maybe this will entice them to come out and uh, spectate and, and, you know, talk uh, trash talk again. I mean, or, you know, bench race. you got Jack Beckman, you got Virgil Hartman, Rhonda Hartman, who used to hang around with, uh, obviously, her, her dad. Uh, and you got some guys that, uh, there was a guy named Mikey. They used to hang around with you, Jim. Oh, that'd be my, my, Mike Halstead. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. He just lives and breathes it. And I'm not sure. Mike Halstead, James, a few others, this is their baby to put this back together. Uh, myself, I'm just a fly on the wall. But the idea was to do like a reunion type yep. deal. And then it just started to take on a life of its own. And, yes, the reunion is going to be great. But we're really excited it's about 2015. And uh, hopefully uh, Mike Halstead's up there uh at this race, but more important, maybe 2015, we'll see them uh, with the circuit. That would be yep. great. And uh, 2015, how many? do you have any uh, number of races planned so far or a goal? Um, not just yet. We are talking a couple tracks here, local. Uh, hopefully to have six to eight races, uh, start off with something like that. And uh, looks like I'm, we're shooting for, uh, obviously, Sacramento again, uh, Bakersfield, hopefully. Uh, Tucson, Arizona would always be a good one for us. And then a, uh, maybe Wild Horse, if they're interested, a couple other other tracks in the area. That'd be great. Uh, you know, you come out to Irwindale, do some testing to it. Yeah, nice. That's close enough for me. Yeah, I'd you work know, for also, you, Pete. 
want to thank Diego. He uh, he's a local up in uh, Sacramento. He's been around the group for years and uh, races motorcycles, and he helped get this thing off the ground. Also, with a lot of leg work, Ron Ward. Also, yeah. Uh, these guys have been doing things up north and getting ready for this race. So we're really looking forward to the first race of uh, of this year for Sifka, and then uh, see how things go from there. Hopefully, it'll springboard into a lot more next year with exposure like with your show and some mm-hmm. of the other stuff. All right, hey guys, thank you very much the for phone calling too, in. That's uh, he's Sifka, looking away. <laughs> yeah. Sifka back alive again. For those of you who want to see some great funny car action and real close racing, you gotta go out. Sacramento's the next one. What's the date? September 12th and 13th. They're going to have one run on uh, Friday night, and the rest of the show will be on the 13th there. All Saturday. right, so head up to Sacramento, take a look at Sifka. Guys, thanks for calling in. Thank you for having us, Bob. And, Thank and, you very much. We'll have to talk to you more about after, what happens after, the, after that race. Yes, we'll look forward to seeing how it goes and turns out, but I really believe it's going to be a big deal. All right. Thanks, guys. Thank you. All right. Thank you. All right, Brendan, got you still there? Yeah, can you believe it? Sure. Brendan is still there. <laughs> All right, you, you've gotten your ear full tonight. Woodward, funny cars, <laughs> and uh, we, we want your stuff. Uh, games. you yeah. got to go to American Torque. Trivia. It's not really a game. It's a trivia contest. Check your knowledge, learn, and see what, what else can be found out about the, some great cars, whether they're hot rods, muscle cars, you name it. You've got it on your your uh, site. Okay, here's one, uh, Brandon. We're, we're totally out of time, but I just clicked on 1940s cars. I'm going oh. to lose badly. Oh, All right. I love and, it. See, I don't want to. Uh, okay, I know the second one. I know um, the first okay, one. I know the first one. I All had right. the second one. Yeah, see, I don't want to answer these on the air. But okay, I know the fourth one. The third one's got like bumper guards, some of those uh, yeah, yeah, know, the, yeah, the yeah. push bar stuff on it, and so it's a little tough. That sounds great yeah. stuff. And Brandon, this you you let people become members to your yeah, site. Yeah, yeah. Anyone can uh, by becoming a member it just allows you to uh, post uh, pictures of your own car and. Um, but you can uh, play a game without bothering to sign up as a member. Okay. Yep. Yeah, that's what I did. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm going to yep. sign up right but afterwards because now I'm going to remember that it's it's a whole site for car enthusiasts. It's not just the trivia games. Yeah, kind of uh, focusing on American-made iron and especially the older older uh, cars, m- mostly 70s and older. But we have uh, newer generation cars also. Great. And some seriously nice, uh, let's see, this is less than That's Cindy's tea, tea bucket we're yeah. looking at. Man, That's some great. great cars on here. All right, Brandon, thank you very much for calling in. Thanks for thank making up the thanks game. Thanks for having for... me. This is fantastic. All right. And we'll be talking to you, I'm sure, away from the uh, the show. But take care and have a good evening. All right. You too. All right, Bruce, looks like we're wrapping it up here. Man, we are so wrapping wow, up. I can't believe it. Fast. Yeah, boy, it did. And you know what? There's so much to see and learn about, not just at americantorque.com, but the Woodward Dream Cruise right. and Sifka, of course. Sifka back. I mean, that, that was really close racing. I met these guys when I worked at L.A. County Raceway in the 80s and 90s. They would come up there on a regular basis. And, you know, like our, some of the pitchers said, the Hartmans, Beckman. Yeah. A lot of the guys that have moved up in the ranks, uh, gone into the alcohol and the top fuel ranks. It's a, it was a great learning ground for people, and the cars were not that expensive on the grand scale of things to go racing with. Yeah. yeah. It's funny how everything's relative that way, yep. isn't it? It yeah. is. Yeah, All right. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in for Speed Scene Live. Bruce, you're going to close us out, but this weekend, you're working hard here in the studio. I'm going to be at a couple of car shows. Uh, I don't remember where. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's just, you know, it's just a blur. <laughs> well... I don't know what to say about that, except for you're going to have a great time. I know I that. I am. I'm going to be around hot rods and muscle cars and customs and more. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, boy, that's a, that, that certainly has Dorothy beat wherever she was in in the land of Oz yeah. before she made it back to Kansas. Uh, Bob, good to see yep. you again. Nice seeing you again, Bruce. All right. Hey, uh, thanks for joining us for the live show. The Encore presentation runs next. I'm, I'm not even saying what I'm going to do this weekend yet, uh-huh. Bob, because I, I'm still kind of waiting for some front-end work on the link, and I yeah. I got to clean the fuel system out on a four-wheel drive. Drive Mustang, yes, a four-wheel drive, drive Mustang. Mustang. So yeah. well, we'll just kind of see how it goes. I don't know. Yeah, I'm going to get my coupe out, and we're going to go cruise. And I know that one show I'm taking it to on Saturday and Sunday, well, that's a whole different show. All right, so there you go. All right, thanks for staying tuned. Thanks for continuing to stay tuned. It's Speed Scene Live. We're back right here next week. We're right here at SpeedScenelive.com. Speed.
Speed Scene Live TV, the number one online motorsports TV show. Brought to you by Curry Racing Rear Ends, m &H Tires, Head Hustler Headers, Aeromotive Fuel Systems, and TheFoat.com.